church. How are you all doing this morning? Mm. We've got one or two rowdy people in the house, that's great. We like a rowdy church that's alive. Church, ain't you glad that, that our God is good this morning? And He's going to bless us this morning because He's a good God. Amen. Well, if it's, if it's your first time with us, we just want to encourage you and bless you. It's so good to be in God's house. It's so good having those join us online on our YouTube streaming channel. Can't wait to worship God this morning. God is so good. I just want to encourage you this morning. Did anybody see the, the total eclipse on Monday or across America on television? Nobody saw it. Come on. Did anybody see the total eclipse? Matt saw it. Steve saw it. But you know what? I was, I, I was watching it on Sky News and I was blown away by the crowds. You know, the Bible says this in Psalm 19, the heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of His hands. You know, when I watched the total eclipse, what was so amazing is that you had crowds, hundreds of thousands of people just looking up and seeing the total eclipse, seeing God's glory. And what were they doing? They were going, wow, wow, wow. You know, creation cries out, creator. But you know, this morning, we've got a chance to create a harmony with creation. You know, because His church are His people, we're His creation. Because of the cross, because of Jesus. So this morning, creation cries out, Creator. But us as a church, we're going to declare a Saviour this morning, aren't we, church? Amen? And there's going to be a great harmony. Creation crying out, Creator. And His church declaring there is a Saviour. So why don't we just join together this morning with Matt and the band who are going to lead us in worship. And let's give Him our praise this morning. Let's sing our hearts out because we have a Saviour. Amen, church? Let's go for it.
tried with all my might But I just can't win the fight I'm slowly drifting A vagabond church this morning. Why don't you just take your, your seats? Yes, hallelujah. Can we have one more? Hallelujah. Come on, church. Amen. He's worthy of all praise this morning. Any church. Well, just want to say how good it is to be in God's house this morning. You know, you guys are looking great, even though I can't see you with these glasses. <laughs> That's just faith speaking, yeah? <laughs> 
But you are, you are absolutely a great bunch of people that God is building here at Living Waters Church. And if it's your first Sunday, maybe you've just been coming a few times, we just want to welcome you. You know, we've been praying that God will bless you as you join us on a Sunday and that you feel right at home. But we just want to encourage you, if you want to find out a little bit more about uh, what we're doing here at Living Waters, then you can get on the QR code, which is on the, in front of the chair, in front of you. But then also at the end of the service, we've got a connection point at the back there. There'll be somebody who would love to chat with you and find out a little bit more and tell you more about what we're doing here at Living Waters. Well, we're going to continue in a minute or so with some more praise and worship with the great band with Matt and Marie. We just love these guys. They're just such a blessing uh, to us. And then a little bit later on, our senior pastor, John Lacey, is going to be preaching the Word of God above and beyond the new message before he goes out to Kenya later today, which is, uh, I'm sure he might mention something a little bit about that, but God is going to be doing some great things in the house through the Word of God this morning. God's got a word to speak to us. He's going to bless us. He's going to give us some instructions, some stuff to do. For some of you ladies, you got any ladies in the house? Ah, well, we... <laughs> There's one or two ladies in the house. I'm not going to say anything uh, bad or anything like that. I know my wife's sitting there and she'll sort me out. <laughs> but uh, for all you ladies, over the month of April and May, there's some social stuff that's kicking off. You're going to go to Go Ape. Anybody done a bit of Go Ape? Climbing around in the trees. It's, I'll tell you, it's high. I've done it. It's high, but it's a great time. And then also there's going to be an afternoon walk. So if you look out on the, the church website, again, you can go on the QR code. Or if you want to be able to just speak to somebody about it, just have a chat with somebody to connect there. They'll be able to uh, book you on that and help you get involved in that, which will be a great time, I'm sure, for, for all you ladies. And I'm sure there's some stuff going to kick off for some of the men at some point in, in the future. Well, I've got a video I'd like you to watch about baptism. So if you just watch this video, that'd be great. So John, we've got a, another baptism service coming up here yeah. at church soon. Uh, it's a real high point of the year when we do these services. Can you explain to us what is baptism, what's it all about? Yeah, so baptism at church here, we just love to celebrate baptism. It represents a real milestone in your journey of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ being his follower. As you go down into the waters of baptism, you're identifying with the death of the Lord Jesus Christ. As you come up out of the water, you're identifying with his resurrection and the new life that that brings. So it's a real celebratory point in our services and we do that in a, in a worship service. You can bring guests along if you're being baptised and a, at a real high point in worship we bring people forward for baptism and we celebrate and the whole church goes wild in celebration as you take that step. It's a really great day, yeah. Fantastic and obviously baptism is something we're following in the footsteps of Jesus so can you explain to us like how that is, how we are following the footsteps of Jesus in baptism? Yeah, so Jesus himself was baptised by John the Baptist, Romans 6, 4 says, We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead, through the glory of the Father, we too may have new life. And, and that's the step that we're taking. We, we are repenting of our sin. We're saying sorry, turning away from our sin and our old life. We're confessing our belief in the Lord Jesus Christ. And then we are carrying on and continuing in that journey of being a committed follower of Jesus Christ. You don't have to be perfect, but you are on a journey and you're learning the words and the ways of Jesus and baptism. It's a command that we find in the scripture. It's an act of obedience and it's such a blessing in the journey of faith, yeah. Yeah, fantastic. So how does, how does someone go about uh, getting baptised here at church? So it's very simply, if you go onto the website, you click the baptism form, fill the form in, or go on the QR code in the chair, on the chair in front of you, you take to the same place. And then it's an individual process. So somebody will contact you, will talk to you about your understanding of baptism, talk you through whether you're ready, and then, then we'll go for it and we'll get you baptised in one of our services. Fantastic, sounds great. So Ben, you, you look after our young people in the church and so many that have been baptised over the last few years. What would you say to any teenager or young person that's thinking about baptism? Great. I would say again, obviously you don't have to be perfect. I think that applies to everybody. Um, I think there's sometimes a perception that you have to be perfect to be baptised, that is not the case. What I would say is that you have to have confessed your faith into Jesus. You have to say, I'm going to live for Jesus for the rest of my days. Uh, I'd say that's, that's number one. I'd say number two, uh, that you shouldn't get baptised just because your friends are being baptised. Yeah, definitely. So I think that's important. Uh, I think this is an individual journey, so I think, um, you know, make sure that it's something that you want to do uh, and not just because everybody around you is doing it. 
And thirdly, I would talk to someone you trust, whether that's a parent, a guardian, a youth leader, or mm. someone in church that you trust. Uh, just about being baptised, what it's meant for them maybe, uh, and then just, yeah, before you, you take that next step, it is an important step for you on your journey, I'd say. Uh, I would encourage that step, but I also encourage you just to mm. think through what you were doing before, before you do it. So. Mm. so we look forward to hearing from anybody that wants to be baptised. Get your interest expressed, fill the form in, mm. and we'll be in contact in due course. Yeah. Well, thank you, Clive. Just, Clive wasn't expecting me to jump in, but I just want to re endorse that about baptism. My name is John and the minister here, but if you're thinking of being baptized, scan that QR code, come and find out more, uh, and we'll have that individual discussion with you. But I've just been, uh, it's come to my attention, there's a couple of people in the house that I want to celebrate with today before Clive just can, continues. Rizia is with us this morning, who's had a heart surgery, and... Rizia, are you... Can you stand up on your chair? Can you stand on your chair where you are? Oh, she's not going to do it. But just put the lights up for us. We've been praying for you as a church family. Look how well she looks. So it's great to have Naomi and Faz, Rizia, the family all here today. And I know she'll not love me for that, but I know so many of you have been asking. I've had so many texts and so many WhatsApps asking me how she is. And so it's great to have you guys here this morning. So, Welcome, Rizia, back to church this morning. Uh, and also, we have Cassia and the family here this morning. Cassia and baby Dominic. Now, where is she? Wave at me, Cassia. Hit right in front of me. Now, is he asleep? He's asleep. Let's leave him asleep, shall we? But it's great to have Dominic, baby Dominic, newest member of the of Living Waters family, here with us this morning. Now then, let's see if any of those cameras can move. Let's do it, Rebecca. Let's move that camera. Come on, move that camera. Cassia, can you walk him just down to the front here? Let's see if this technology works. Just turn the pram that way. And Rebecca, you come over here. We've got three young, young girls on the cameras this morning. They're amazing. Now she's going to show you the baby. Come on, Rebecca. This is baby Dominic. Go on, get in there. Get in there. Zoom in. Zoom in, Rebecca. There we go. There he is, and he's doing wonderful. Isn't he beautiful? That's baby Dominic. Thank you. Give him a round of applause. Cassie, I'm just going to pray for you and for Dominic, for Daniel, for the whole family, that God would just be with you and bless you in the, in the coming days. So, Father, we thank you for Rizia and Lord being here this morning, Lord, that you've been with her through her journey and she's returning to strength. We thank you for the safe arrival of baby Dominic and we thank you that he's such a joy and such a blessing. Would you bless his little life, bless their family, Lord, and all that they turn their hands to and would he thrive and grow and one day come to know you as his saviour. Lord, we look forward to to dedicating him in the church in the next few weeks or months. And we pray, Lord, that you would be with this family in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks, Clive. Wow, God's doing so much good stuff. Well, we're going to continue our praise and worship with the band in a minute. But as we do that, we're going to take our regular tithes and offerings. So you can either do that by bringing some stuff to the bucket, your, your offerings there, or you can do it online. But also maybe some of you uh, are taxpayers, you can gift aid your offerings this morning. So maybe some of you need to think about that. It's a great blessing to the church because we get a percentage of what you give this morning back through the tax man, which is a benefit to the church. So if you want to know more about gift aid, then speak to somebody that the connect desk at the end of the service and you can also do it online so through the QR code why don't you stand and then for all the youth and the kids it's time for you guys to go out to your relevant department so it's the kids down here on the on your right and then the youth are in the youth room and then all the sauce at the tops god bless
going to start that one again because I started it in the wrong key. <laughs> Start it because I can't remember how it goes. There we go. Thank God, good. Thank goodness, God's presence doesn't presence doesn't rely on me getting things right. <laughs>
promises they are yes and amen Some of your foundations are in Jesus, but not all of them. But today we choose to rest in his promises. And our confidence is in those promises.
Father, we thank you for your presence here today. And as we look at your word, would you speak to us, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I thank you to all the teams that have been working this morning and to all of our tots, babies, youth, worship, welcome, refreshments, stewarding, blah, 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 and everybody. So thank you so much for all that you do. Uh, Clive just mentioned, so after the service today, I'm nipping away, so I'll just nip, nip away quickly at the end of the service, got to get down to Heathrow, flying to Kenya in the morning. Um, with, so Elim are taking a group of 10 ministers out there to look at the work of Compassion UK, and I'm joining that team. But don't worry, I'll be back next weekend, so it's all okay. You can't get rid of me that easily, so uh, that's the plan. I thought it'd be interesting this morning, just as, a, as an introduction to this new series, which will go on uh, for an indeterminate amount of weeks. Uh, no, it won't, actually. Um, certainly not undeterminate, anyway, but we will, we will get there. This whole uh, message, Above and Beyond, is a new, a new portion of teaching that I want to bring to you, looking at uh, some principles that we see in the Bible about God's uh, above and beyond for each one of us. But to put that into perspective for you, sometimes when I'm preparing a series of messages, like, for example, the one that we've done on Mark recently, the one that we're at the New Kingdom, the one that we did uh, more recently from the book of Thessalonians, you do what would be classed as expository preaching where you go through a passage and you work passage by passage and you feel as, a, as you're preparing what is the Holy Spirit saying to you from that passage and what is the theme for the church. But other times there are very, uh, what, what, I, what I would class as more uh, prophetic, in the moment, seasoned messages for just where we are as a church. Uh, and this is one of those. And last time this happened, I was running and had some headphones on and was listening to a song by Coldplay and there was a line in the song and it said, I said, I'd rather be a comma than a full stop. And, it, and, and so I did a series of preaching called The Comma or the Full Stop. And God was doing something in me at that point where I was trying to back out of things, let go of things, create space for other people so that I'd be a comma person rather than a full stop person. It wouldn't begin and end with my ministry, but it would empower other people. That was something that I brought to the church about the, the method of discipleship that we have where we, we are encouraging, empowering others in the way that we, we do life into their ministry. And then, then there was this a few weeks ago where I was tasked to bring, I think I was hosting that morning but not preaching, and I was bringing a little section about the offering. Now, if you've noticed recently, we don't do large offering talks. Um, we've, just, we've just been more natural with the way that we've taken the offering. Uh, but I had that morning when I was preparing the offering talk, a phrase drop into my spirit. It was, it was just above and beyond. You can either live in the above and beyond that God has for you or you can live in the below and beneath. And I didn't really understand a lot about that at that point. I came and I brought the offering message. And as I brought that message, uh, I, I knew that there was something unpacking in me around that. So this is the culmination of thought and prayer that's gone into above and beyond. And to help you understand that, I'd like you to turn in your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20 is our, is our key verse. But I'm going to read around from verse 14 to help you understand some context of Paul as he writes his letter to the church in Ephesus a church that he loves and cares for and has been pastorally caring for and guiding. And before we get to our verse, um, Paul, in a sense, is yearning and hoping and praying that these Ephesian people will carry on in the faith, that they'll grow in the faith, that they'll grow spiritually. Paul says when he thinks about them, he falls to his knees in prayer that he prays to the creator of heaven and earth for them, that he intercedes for them, that he would be glorified through the church, that, that God would be glorified through the church. And we get to a very famous verse, but I'm not assuming everybody knows the verse, uh, where Paul is speaking uh, to the church, and he speaks about his perspective of the love of God, and if only they could understand a perspective that he understood. So I want you to, before we get to that perspective, imagine that you have seen a structure that you've always wanted to go and look. So maybe you've wanted to always go and see the Grand Canyon, let's say. Has anybody in the room seen the Grand Canyon? Wow, you lucky people. So I've not seen the Grand Canyon, but we've got family live not far away from it. We need to do that. But 
Imagine that you only ever saw photographs of the Grand Canyon, but that one day you were lucky enough to get a helicopter ride that dropped you right into the center of the canyon, and that you could look out and see the expansiveness of the canyon to the east and to the west, to the north and to the south. And no photos, no 3D drawing, no imaging would do it justice when you see something in the flesh. You know what I mean? When you, when you hear about that mountain, you're going to go and walk that mountain. And then you will finally realize how high that cliff is when you get to the top of it. And you have this wondrous release in your head that says, wow, isn't creation vast? Well, Paul was speaking about the love of God from that perspective. He's had a revelation of the love of God, and he wants other people to know it. And so he says this, when I think of this, I fall to my knees. I pray to the Father, the creator of everything in heaven and on earth. I pray that from his glorious, unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength from his spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your heart as you trust him, that your roots would grow down deep into God's love and keep strong. And may you have the power to understand, as all good, good, God's people should, how wide and how long and how high and how deep his love is. Now may you experience the love of Christ. Not just know it, but experience the love of Christ. Though it's too great to fully understand, then you'll be made complete with all the fullness of, of life and power that comes from God. And then we get to our verse. Now all glory to God who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more then we might ask or think glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. That's where the above and beyond phrase came. In the New King James Version, it says this, now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think, according to the power that is at work in us, to him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus, to all generations, young and old, forever and ever, amen. What a powerful verse. So Paul's saying things like, I'm praying that Christ would make his home in your hearts, that your roots would go deep, that you would stand in the trials, that you would understand the breadth and the depth and the width and the height of the love of God to your human capacity as much as you possibly can. And then our verse sits there. That you would know what the above and beyond nature of God's heart is for you. So on that morning when I brought the offering talk, I said you can either choose to live in the above and beyond, the exceedingly abundantly of God's best for you, the immeasurably more, all of those phrases that we see in scripture. Or you can choose actually to live below that and it might be okay in the below and the beneath, that might be fine, but it may not be God's fullest and his best for you. And so it hit me. As I've been preparing this series, there are many, many people joined our church in the last few months. And you may have never heard our heart on stewardship and our heart on living in faith and our heart on stepping out. And so this series is a, heart, is a series to help you begin to understand that. And there's a few things that I'm gonna do maybe the next time that I preach that I really feel God has impressed on my spirit to help you with some visual analogies to understand that. But today, I felt that God gave me a word for the church. And I wanna use that word a few times. We wanna get it out there into social media, etc. So we've recorded that as an audio clip for the end of the message today. So it's not a very deep message today. It's an introduction. But last year, as we approached our first fruits offer in 2023, and we had this amazing desire to bless our youth ministry, to refurbish our cafe, to make space upstairs for the young people. By the way, it's done. The room, the room for our young people is now, it's done. It's all completed. They've got great AV in there. They've got seats and couches and blinds and everything is perfect up there for them so that they can grow into that space. But they're already filling it. That's the reality. 
And we did our cafe and it looks beautiful. And every time I walk in, I go, oh, it's nice and bright and white in here. But you come in on a Tuesday and Friday, sometimes you can't get a seat. And the cafe is used throughout the week because God just meets you where your faith is. And many of you in your first week's offering last year, you gave to that and you gave in faith and you trusted the leaders here in the church to administer that faith, that, that giving in such a way that those things that you've given to would come to pass and so they have. But I began to wonder, what would it look like for a church to thrive in that way, in resource and financially, without the need annually to have big kind of vision things? What if, what if there was enough resource in the house to be able to do what we needed to do and be generous when we needed to be generous week in, week out. Of course, we try to live that way, but resources are finite. And I really had this impression in my spirit that God was leading me over this series to bring a release into that area so that the church finds itself in a place where it can exist that way. Because listen, what does that verse tell me when Paul's praying for the church in Ephesus. He says, you can ask and think some things. That's okay. We're all good at asking, and we're all good, or most of us are good at dreaming, thinking, imagining. God uses our asks and our imagination and our vision and our, and our pictures that we, we see in our mind, and he takes those things, and sometimes he uses them as the basis for, what is the heart of this place? What are they asking for, thinking for? What are they dreaming about? How can I bless them? And then he says, but listen, that's not the limitation of what I can do amongst my people. Because whatever you ask or think for, I can do immeasurably and more, more, exceedingly abundantly, above and beyond that which you can ask or think. Now, I take a step back from this and think about all of the years that we have seen God do exceedingly, abundantly amazing things in this church. For example, the premises that you're sat in, the community projects that happen week by week, the way that the church is open and visible throughout the week, the way that we're involved overseas in missions. Many years ago, Tony and Jennifer were leading the church, Pastor Tony and Jennifer, that's my parents, by the way, if you don't know them, they, they planted a missions work into India where we had a boys' home, an orphanage, but that has now grown to become a training facility uh, and accommodation for students. We've got male and female students going through degree education in India because they asked asked and thought about something. But God saw something exceedingly abundantly above what they asked and thought. And it grew. And God blessed it. And people got behind it. And our missions work for Living Waters Church, which we're going to tell you about in a service in May, by the way, began to take its place and began to form. God did exceedingly abundantly outside of the house and into other nations. And so, I was praying and thinking into all of this. And my first point this morning is very, very simple for you. It's this. God can and will accomplish more than you can ask and think. But if you don't ask or think, can he accomplish? <laughs> Interesting. Interesting. Michelle, could you pass me that water? If you don't ask... It, so I think sometimes as you get to your middle age... And that's where I am, by the way. I always think I'm in my 20s, but then I see the mirror. Uh, I'm definitely in my middle age. The other day, I had the unfortunate experience of going out, sit, sat in a restaurant where there was just mirrors all around us. And Michelle and I were sat there, and I kept looking in the mirror thinking, what's she doing with this old boy here? Like, like, like she managed to stay eternally youthful, and I just seem to be getting older. I don't know what's going on. But... You see, the asking and, asking and the dreaming. Asking, the, the actual action of seeing the potential of something that you see a gap and you see that God can do, and you ask God to meet that need. But in your, as you get older, it's very easy to settle. You know, I'll just settle. That restless kind of thing in the spirit that says, to take ground, we have to take steps of faith. It can very easily settle, and it doesn't matter how long you've been a mature Christian. Sometimes it's easy to sit back and go, I'll just settle for where I am. It's just more comfortable here. 
and friends in Living Waters Church, we could settle right now. It's great. We settle. Let's just settle. Do church as we do church. We enjoy it. Great worship. And then at Easter, I chucked in a couple of services and kind of sowed a seed. Let's ask or think about something. What if we doubled our capacity? And what if, what if we tried something that stretched our teams? And I know that coming off the back of COVID, people were like, oh, we were burnt out and we're tired. But actually, in reality, God wants us to ask and think about dreams and visions. He wants us to ask for new things. And I look back over my ministry. This is coming into the 13th, I lose track, 13th year, 14th year. And, I, and as, I, as I reflect back on my early ministry, those steps of faith, we, we, did, amazing, we did big things. Like we built this building and then we built Hall 2, raised it in a morning. Do you remember? Do you remember when there was a porter cabin out the back there and, I, and we sowed a vision? And I read the, I read the thing wrong when, when Rebecca gave me the, the thing that said how much money we'd raised in that morning. And I'd read the decimal point in the wrong place. But it was over £127,000 in a morning. And I forgot, I forgot some of these steps. And then we planted a church and we had some kind of things to work through there as we planted the church and you gave to that. And then, and then, and then we sowed into our missions and we built the storehouse there and we did all of, the, all of these things. And, and, but if we never asked or thought for anything, we'd have never done any of it. God wants us to ask and think. So much bigger. But asking is one thing, dreaming is another. Now, there are some people in this room, you're dreamers. Yeah, me. <laughs> we know. <laughs> there's dreamers. There's dreamers. There's logical people. There's the askers, and you ask what you can work out. But now and again, it's really great to dream. So when I took the church over, I'm sorry, this is a very in-house message today, but when I took the church over, God gave me a strap line for the church. I'm pretty sure not many people got me but I got it. Build a city standard church in a town. Was it? What does that mean? What does a church that exists in that transient city mentality look like? What does it do? It sends. What does it do? It gathers. What does it do? It disciples and releases. It's generous. It puts out, and, and it exists for its community in its wideness. And that's what I saw in my heart. It's got great worship. It's got accessible programs. It disciples and it comes alongside people. But it remains where it is. Now, we're in a town. And I think that's still an oxymoron for many people. John, you can't build a city standard church in the town. I beg to differ because this church is larger in its sphere and influence than some of our Elam City churches. Scrub that from the... <laughs> because God placed in the leadership, a dream and a vision that said, build something that will call and attract and disciple and nurture and be attractive to those people within our communities. So are you a dreamer for your life, for your family, for your health, for your ministry? You see, many of us, we, we love to sit on the couch and dream. Oh, if I could only get fit and healthy. I've been dreaming about this for 10 years on the couch. If I could only just... But you see, the first and the hardest step of getting fit and healthy is putting your shoes on and walking out of the door, is it not? I get it's easy when you're in your 20s and you're slim and all of that. But, but you know, as you get older and it's easy to sit on the couch with a cup of tea, what I'm saying is, if you're dreaming for your health, you've got to do something about it. You've got to ask, you've got to think, you've got to get out. If you're dreaming for your ministry, some of you in this room, you know that God has placed in your heart ministry of some description, whether it be kind of preaching or teaching or leadership or pastors or, or children's work or youth work. But the, heart, the first and the hardest step is calling that out, identifying it and taking that first step of saying, I'll take that test. I'll do that exam. I'll write that paper. I'll, I'll do whatever is needed, whatever you ask me to do, wherever you ask me to go. Now, think about your finances. I want to be blessed financially. I want our family to be blessed. I want to have a great home, and we want to be able to give, and we want to be able, but all of those things. But, but I'm not prepared to do the first step of giving my first to God. 
You see how easy it is sometimes to settle, to sit back. But God promises here through this passage that he is able to achieve in and through you more than your dreams. More than your dreams. What are your dreams? And if you stop dreaming, get dreaming a little bit. It's illuminating, it's powerful. God hears and he sees the desires of our hearts. He sees open, malleable, flexible people and he says, there's one, there's two, there's three. Let's pull them together. We put them all together in a church and we'll see what this army of people can achieve in my name. So building a city standard church in the town, maybe some of you will understand that, but I understand it. But when I, when I initially in 2009, 10, when we brought that vision, this church like this didn't exist. But I'll tell you now that when I t- gave that strap line to the church and we prayed into it and we sought, sought God for it and we gave to it, that what exists now is what was in my heart. So now God's got to give me a new vision, something new. I've got to keep dreaming. You do not need your leaders to stop dreaming. You don't need us to, to back off and settle and sit down. We've got to keep going. So our first roots offering at the back end of this year, if we do it in the way that we've always done it, it's gonna be above and beyond. It's gonna be an above and beyond concept, but we'll get to that another time. And it's not gonna be about figures and all that stuff, but it's gonna be about heart, what we bring to God. Now, Jesus is glorified in his church. The purpose of his blessing is to glorify Jesus in the church. Why would God want to release blessing throughout this house? Why would he want to bless your homes and families and, and generosity be released into the house? Why? Because it says here, glory to him in the church. When there are thriving churches, Jesus is glorified. When there are growing, healthy, vibrant churches, Jesus is glorified. Not me, not people, not, not this place, but Jesus is glorified. I wonder how many people in our community have talked about Living Waters Church in a positive light in the last two weeks. Interesting question, isn't it? What value do we add to our community? What happens if our church ceased to exist tomorrow? Would they miss us? Would they? No, I'm asking you a question. Would they miss us? If you know about what we do, would they miss us? I think they'd miss us. I think the council would miss us. Scrub that from the recording too. (laughs) They would. Do you know how much emergency food provision we put out and classes we provide for people virtually free of cost that if we weren't doing, other organizations would need to do? Day in, day out, day in, day out, day in, day out. Because of something I put out on social media this weekend, or this last week, because God has placed in this church open-handed people. And that's a whole other message, so we're not getting there. But open-handedness. So Jesus is glorified in his church. If you're writing things down, think about this. Number one, when he is worshipped authentically. Number two, when his people live according to his words and his ways. Number three, when our gifts and resources are offered to him first, rather than always serving our own needs. And number four, when people tell others about him and communicate with him in prayer and study. Some points about when churches thrive. When churches shrink, these things happen. Listen, the people's needs are elevated, elevated above glorifying Jesus. That's when churches shrink. When the needs of a certain generation are put above, the need, uh, above glorifying Jesus. When politics Uh, are resounding in the church. Churches shrink when resources and talents are held back. When we've got perfectly capable people sat in the pews who could give and serve and contribute in all the different ministries, but they just don't. They just won't. I would dare to say that in some shrinking churches in the UK, the pews are populated with well-gifted people who just don't want to serve because they don't understand the need and the reason to serve. Churches shrink when people treat church like a tonic. Let me unpack that one. If you think church is just a show, it's just entertainment, it's your pick-me-up, 
then eventually what's going to happen is when you get older, no one's going to take your place. Don't come to church just for a tonic. Worship and live for Jesus because he's your core and your reason for being. So that's when churches thrive. That's when churches shrink. Now, in this message preparation, I recorded something that I want you to listen to to close this message now. And I I just frame it before you listen to it. For those of you who are not used to a Pentecostal setting, sometimes we feel as leaders that God speaks to us in a, a word that we think has a sense of meaning for the church, and we may call that a prophetic word. Sometimes we, we feel God may speak to us and give us information or insight into a situation or place or moment or season. And sometimes we call that like a word of wisdom or discernment. This, I would say, is probably a prophetic word because I think the words in, these passage, in this passage now will help unlock potential within the church in the areas that I'm talking about over the next few weeks. So I'd like you to take a listen. And Clive, it will end fairly abruptly, so I'll pass straight back to you to do the wonderful thing that you do. But would you just take a listen to what I think God has been saying to us in the season that we're in and where we're headed? As your God, I've guided you, opened doors for you, and provided for you every step of the way. I've never failed you. And I've walked with you through every season. I've gathered into this house all the gifts needed to crush you into the new that I have for you. I've drawn together into this house many people with diverse experience, giftings and needs. And I'm going to expand your reach as you honour and obey me. The gift of generosity is already in the house. So honour me with your possessions and learn to live in the above and beyond that I have for you. My above and beyond is outside of your creative ability, but exists within mine. I require your heart, your obedience and your honour. Let my church be open-handed, abiding in the truth of my words and actively widen the doors to welcome all who will seek me here. Shall we just pray? Father, I thank you this morning that you're calling your church to live above beyond life. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for our Pastor John. And Lord, we just pray that over the coming weeks, Lord, that you will just really still our hearts and open our hearts and enable us to walk in all that you have for us. Father, we thank you for your presence this morning. Father, we just want to pray for Pastor John as he goes over to Kenya. We pray for safety and blessing. The Lord, that you'll encourage him and that you'll use him. Father, we also want to just pray for your people Israel this morning and what's going on in the Middle East. Father, we just pray for peace. The Lord, that you will just do something right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Why don't we just give God some thanks and thank Pastor John for just a great, great message this morning. We've got a prayer team here on your left. They're going to be at the front. If you need prayer this morning, you know, I was reminded this morning that God is able. You have anything, anything that you need this morning. And we've been encouraged this morning to ask. So if you need prayer this morning, there's a team here on your left that are going to be praying with you. And God can do a miracle. And then also we've got the cafe that's open. So please do hang about and chat with somebody, get a brew and have a fantastic week, everybody. Have a great week. God bless you. Thanks very much.